Um, hey guys, I hope you can hear me. Um, I'm going to try. I'm so jet lagged, so excuse me if I start yawning in the middle. Um, so, my name is Rita. I'm traveling from San Francisco, and my colleagues are, and I are here visiting Singapore um, to work with customers and startups in, in this area. Um, so, what do I do? Uh, I'm an open source engineer, so I work a lot with startups and open source communities. Um, to mainly understand what are the pain points that you have um, and block any issues that you, you may have when working on uh, open source platforms on Azure or Windows. Um, so if you guys ha are working uh, with an open source platform and you're having issues with it, please let me know afterwards. I would love to get to know what your problems are and see if um, our team can actually work with you to help you um, get that unblocked. Um, cool. Um, so as I said, um, I'm, I'm an open source engineer. Um, so I just kind of want to understand like how many of you have tried using um, Azure Insight or, or HD Insight? Sorry? A little bit? Okay. Um, and just how about Spark in general? Have you tried running it on your laptop? Great. Awesome. Um, and anybody tried running incremental processing with Spark? Okay, awesome. This is going to be an awesome talk. Uh, I was afraid that this was going to be like, oh, like, been there, done that. So, uh, cool. So, let me kind of tell you a little bit about this project that um, our team has been working on. So, we partner with the UN um, to mainly look at. Um, you know, leveraging social media to see what are some of the areas um, in Middle East that people may need um, aid. Um, so, so if there's like um, uh, uh, any attacks or if, or if they need any um, uh, help. Uh, so, UN is basically leveraging people's tweets and Facebook posts um, to help identify issues before you know it becomes like really major. Um, so here is where we helped um, the UN to basically crawl the web um, and, and using people's tweets to analyze, is this a happy tweet? Is it a sad tweet? Um, should we be concerned about this? Um, and basically <coughs> aggregate that. And so this is basically where Spark comes in. Um, so we look at um, uh, across all the tweets, uh, we analyze uh, using natural language processing, we analyze is this a negative or uh, positive um, uh, tweet, and then we aggregate that. Um, and then we also figure out in, in, an er in a geographic area, are people tweeting about this particular keyword? And if that's a trend, then this bubble gets bigger. Um, and that's when we start, uh, that's when UN looks at this as an alert and, um, and go see if that this is a real concern. Um, so at a high level, as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, we, we developed this in different modules. Um, but essentially, there is a, a natural language processor that extracts the actual tweet. Um, and in a little bit, I'll actually show you guys what the tweet looks like. I don't understand it because it's in another language. Um, but we also have a translation engine back in the back. Um, but basically, we take the raw data and we put in data, um, put, put in, in storage. Um, but most importantly, uh, where we're for, for the today's talk is where we take the natural language processing, we parse out the keywords, and then we do some analytics on the keyword. So like aggregating, and as I mentioned earlier, you, you then count uh, the number of keywords, and you take out information like location, lat long, and then that's where we put the information in uh, blob storage. Um, so this is all great, and we get this data like at a consistent pace. Um, but as anyone who's used Spark in the past, this is a pretty expensive operation. Um, so if you, so in this case, um, we can't we couldn't really leverage uh, Spark streaming because it wasn't like you know it wasn't like constantly we're getting constant data coming in and out where that would have been uh, way more efficient. Um, but in our Spark uh, cluster. Um, would, uh, you, it would be very expensive to basically um, always constantly um, trying to process this, the entire batch. So imagine a lot of tweets. Um, if, you out, if you always have to aggregate all this data, 
uh, and the entire data set is very, very expensive. So what we've done instead um, is, is this right? Yeah. Uh, what we've done instead is we took um, the entire data set um, on a daily or hourly basis because it, it doesn't come in that, that often. Um, so based on that, then we summarize the data and we put it in a partial summary. Then every time we, when we process a, a, a tiny block of delta, that's when we process that data and then we then merge that information with the results that we've, we've already had. And then that's where the new data set comes in. And then the next time when we get a, a new data, uh, uh, new tweets, then that's when we process the new data set. And then it, the same thing happens again and again. Um, so for today's demo, um, I'm going to show you guys like how it works on my laptop. And this is just purely Spark, no Azure, no Microsoft, right? I'm using a Mac. Um, <laughs> But, um, but I also wanted to show you guys it is really, really easy um, to spin up your own uh, Azure Insight cluster. And the reason for that is, I don't know about you guys, I don't like to like, spin up six uh, nodes of uh, Spark cluster just for simple tests. Um, so normally what I do is I create the cluster and I just run my job on the cluster so I don't have to worry about it. Um, and I, can, I will show that um, in a little bit. Um, and this is just to show you guys how I, how I created my cluster, because creating the whole cluster takes like 20 minutes, so I don't want you guys to wait. Um, so, but basically, when you go to Azure, you basically say, oh, I want to create a, an HD Insight cluster, and you can specify what type of, um, uh, what type of uh, cluster you want, whether that's for a Spark, cluster, or Storm, or you know, you, you guys seen all this before. And then, you can also um, specify what version you want to run, um, and you can also specify if you want to run it on Linux or Windows, um, depending on your requirements. OK, so we're going to go to demo. OK, so as I mentioned earlier, um, by the way, any questions so far? All right. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, this is kind of an example of the data set. Um, so, like I said earlier, I this is I don't understand this language, but um, but we have um, we actually run through our translation service that basically translates this into something we can understand we and we can aggregate on. Um, but basically, with the raw tweet, um, we then analyze. Um, we get a bunch of data like what uh, the keywords or um, what what section is this in um, the location. Um, and the time and uh, uh, lat uh, lo uh, long information, so on and so forth. Um, so with this, so imagine every you know hour or so we get this type of um, data coming in. Um, wow, this is really tiny. Um, but basically, the results that you get in the end. So if you guys can see, this is really tiny. Uh, in the output. This is kind of what we remember earlier. We saw um, uh, in the in the in the map, right? You guys saw tiles of um, like tiles of data. So essentially, that's what we want to do: is we want to take this data and then we want to um, identify by the type of keywords, and then with that, um, then each each keyword then is broken up by days. Um, and then in the days, then each um, JSON file is essentially tiles. So t each tile gets a count, and each tile has, is this a negative or is it positive? And so the color that you, the bubble that you saw, like the red was like negative. Um, and depending on the count, that's how the, the diameter of the, the circle. How do you define the keywords? Um, that's a great question. UN actually helped, with, uh, helped us with that. Um, so they understood, like, so. So if you see this um, folder structure, like they they were like, oh, we want this to be uh, defined in like by groups, and you can see it's like men, people, women, youth. Um, so it's like their their classification for how they want to see the like how they want to classify the tweets. So it's arbitrary. It's arbitrary to me, but it it, it makes sense yeah. for them. Yeah. Um, 
yeah. Um, and then, but I, but to your point, the most important one is keyword because um, uh, because as you can see here, you actually get stuff like attack, Benghazi bomb, yeah. yeah. Um, so so basically, it you know it, it's like it's keywords that they often see in real situations, and that's what they want to look at. Um, okay, so without further ado. Um, so I so this is lo like running locally. So what I've done is essentially I'm I'm telling this thing like oh I want to run it incrementally. Um, so as you guys can see, um, what what we've done as I mentioned earlier is uh, is essentially um, we've we've created this thing called like uh, previous jobs, right? So so everything in here is the jobs that we've done in the past. And that this is like a summary of all the jobs that I've ever run. And every time I get new slices of data, then we, we take that summary and we merge it with the previous summary. Um, so here, we're just gonna take a random one. Uh, let's say the keyword, let's say this one. So I'm gonna just copy it. Now remember this is two, right? So the next time when I run incremental, this should go up. Um, it imagines the same data set. So obviously in real life, it wouldn't be the same data set. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna run this. So what this is doing is it's loading up the previous summary and summarizing, merging the current set and then merging the two data sets together. Um, the reason why I picked this specific topic is I thought this is like something that you know you 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 will only encounter this is if you don't have constant data streaming, but you also care about your cost. Um, so, okay, uh, cool. So now, if you see, um, okay, so t that's November eighth. 410. So you see that this is like a new folder, right? It's a new timestamp. Um, and if I pick one of these guys, so you see how this this was the this was the data set that I showed you guys previously. So now it's at three. I mean, it's a it's a it's a it's a simple way to see that it gets aggregated over time. Okay, great. So. This is all wonderful. I'm a great developer. It works on my machine. But what if I want to run this in production? Uh, cool. So here is the cluster that I created previously. Remember I showed you guys a screenshot of how to create it? Um, so in that screenshot, essentially, after you click around, um, you sp so I specify I want a Spark cluster, and I want this version of Spark. Um, and it's running on Linux VMs. And then, as you can see, I have six nodes, um, two heads, and four workers. Um, so here, uh, I can click on this that la launches the, you guys have seen this before. Um, and this is basically the dashboard where you can get to see all your uh, Hadoop features, right? Um, so here is where it's telling me um, this is my current Spark um, information. So if you come over here, this, this is like a summary of all the past Spark jo jobs that I ran on this cluster. Um, and again, what's nice about this is, you know, this is all open source, right? Like Microsoft didn't write this. Like this is, if you've ever worked with this stuff, you can run this on your laptop, you can run it anywhere. Um, it just happens that Microsoft like enabled us to use this on Azure. Um, so as you can see, here are the jobs and the summaries. Um, and you can tell if it, if it went through successfully. Um, and then here, as you can see, while it's running, you, you can also see like how many tasks are running and what's the, um, like which node is actually running on. Remember, we have like six nodes, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly uh, show you guys how that works. So now that my cluster is up and running, I basically, SSH'd into the one of the master uh, nodes. So here I'm in that node, um, and once I'm in that node, I basically did get clone. I got my code here, and then um, here is a script where I'm specifying. Um, if you see here, 
I'm specifying here's my storage account information to like to put my files there because we have input and output, right? Um, and then I specify the containers where I'm putting these files in. Um, and then here is where I'm telling uh, this, um, to, to, uh, this is where I'm telling Spark I want to run this incrementally. Um, does that make sense? Okay. Uh, okay. So once I've done that, uh, then I'm just going to go ahead um, and run this script. And just to show you guys, um, so before I run it, as you can see, this is from yesterday, right? This, this summary was from yesterday. Um, I know this is US time, but, <laughs> um, but this is a, a, ru a run that I did yesterday. Um, and then if you look here, uh, wow, that's so tiny. Change it's okay. Um, yeah, I mean, you guys can see it, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, but it's the same concept. Exactly the files that I have locally. It's it's just same data set, right? Um, so, it, so this is eight. Uh, now I'm just gonna go ahead and run this. So it's gonna run incrementally. Um, but the only difference is now it's running in the cloud. I don't have to worry about my laptop going crazy. Um, so once this guy is done, uh, then you will see, let's see. So previous, uh, as you can see now there are two folders. Um, it's going to delete the previous solution now that we have the new one. Uh, it's still running. Cool. So now, as you can see, this is like today, right? Um, if you go in here and we pick one of these data sets. Cool. Uh, and now this is the, the new aggregated uh, summary with the latest data set. Um, cool. Um, so I think that was pretty much all I wanted to show. Um, wanted to like give you guys like a real world scenario. Um, and that's pretty much it. So this is my Twitter and my GitHub um, account if you guys want to go check it out. Um, we will be releasing the code soon. So. exactly why we want to keep it in a JSON format so that um, the front end uh, JavaScript code could just parse the JSON. Uh, yeah. um, and actually, if you, if you saw the result set, right, it's, it's all the tiles, right? So actually, the way we, we've done it is that all the tiles and the tiles below that, they get all the aggregate count. So if you zoom into the map, it's actually the same count. So each JSON uh, each JSON is actually an an aggregate of all the tiles, all the children tiles, right. if that makes any sense. Yeah. Because yeah. I've never used Spark, so I'd like to ask, like, uh, why is it uh, special and why is it useful? Because normally I just you know, do programming like you know, in R or some programming languages, but never Spark. So I have no idea like why it's special. Sure. Yeah, um, I'm sure people in this room can answer this way better than I can. Um, I'm only a user, so like I can only speak like when I use it. Um, it it's it's 
it's a, a definitely more efficient and the newer way of using Hadoop. Um, and it's um, really good at doing like map and reduce. So as you saw earlier, right, we basically map all the data and then we parse it into chunks so that you, know, you can have all six nodes doing aggregation at the same time. Um, so that's what it's good at. It's good at parallel processing all the data and then when it's done, it aggregates them together. Okay. Is that? There but is it's more for big data, not not machine learning. So, but there is also like programming inside Spark, or you use other languages and then use Spark to do some mapping. Um, I I use PySpark. Um, so as you saw earlier, all my scripts were just like it's just Spark s submit a job, okay. right? Okay, so um, it's like Python. Spark and then use just Azure. To yeah, Azure is just where, so imagine Azure is just like a laptop sitting in the cloud somewhere, okay, right? Cloud. Yeah, yeah, so there's nothing specific about Azure in this case. Um, there is one thing that is specific is where I store the data. So as when I run it here, it's in a file system, right, on my machine. But, be, but when I run it um, in Azure, all my files are in uh, Azure blob storage. Yeah. How much data were you processing? Um, this is, uh, it keeps growing, uh, honestly. Um, r right now, uh, we're, we're actually not continuously running because this is not in production, right? Like this is for UN, for them to, anal to evaluate. Um, but so far it's already like we had to do it like every hour as opposed to like constantly because the data is just too much. How much um, data was coming in every hour? Honestly, I can't answer that right now. Yeah, I, it just keeps growing. So whatever I tell you is probably wrong. Yeah. What about random events in the time zone? Okay. Sometimes in the day, we can almost model which we expect to identify. Yeah. Some random place. Yeah, that's a. Um, yeah, and and I think that's also why we decided to go down this route because then you're at a given time you're processing even though it, it could be a lot or a little but you're just processing the new stuff you don't have to like whereas before we had to process everything and that took hours and so we're like this doesn't make sense so let's only do the new the fresh data is it about predicting or is it about understanding it's more alert sorry uh, you're, you mean the use case right yes because uh, let's say you're looking for keywords, especially like moms, right. all these kind of things, which uh, get special attention when something happens on Right. So, so this is meant to notify, like alert UN that they're cooking or something. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
because the files are for analytics purpose, but the raw data we store somewhere else. Like the location stuff, uh, we store somewhere else. Yeah. I, there's no good answer for that. We just treat all the tweets as, you know, yeah, yeah. But good question. I, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. No questions about Microsoft, no questions about it. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to our lucky draw. Yeah.